Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us. You know, Brian, it's really bright out today and it's sunny say and, that. <laughs> and things are starting to get going again and, and that's exciting because corn planting is right around the corner and one of the things that we're going to be planting on our farm is some corn that's refuge in the bag. We're going to talk about planting some seeds that are protected from bugs like corn rootworms and others that aren't and should you consider using insecticide as well. Well you know one of the questions I've had recently from farmers is should I be planting Roundup 1 soybeans this spring so I can save them next year for seed? We're going to talk about Roundup soybean patent expiration today on the show. And we've got one of those difficult to control weed of the weeks that nobody likes to face on their farm. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Brian, I'm holding in my hand a material safety data sheet. This is yep. something that every farmer should have for every product they're applying on their farm, but what is this thing? Okay, well, it's not just for on the farm. So let's say you have a household uh, cleaner and you probably didn't even realize there's a little bit of uh, safety concern with some of those products in your home. You can look this up online and take any product in the world just about that's labeled in the United States and there will be this material safety data sheet and it will just tell you a bunch of different things and we're going to go through all these little details here in a little bit but it'll go through a bunch of different things about this product and really how safe it is and how it should be used. Well this particular product has 16 things Brian on the material yep. safety data sheet. Let's quiz you and see all how right. well you know them. Okay right first of all chemical <laughs> product and company identification with emergency numbers what do we need emergency numbers for well okay <laughs> you you know what we need emergency numbers for just in case but here's the one thing that i wanted to point out on the farm everybody gets panicked by oh i gotta have all the safety stuff and everything else yeah you do but you know what there are a lot of really really safe products now on the farm it's whole different than it was 30 40 years ago where we had a lot more dangerous items a lot of those things are banned now in the united states so i feel pretty good but anyway it's just contact information and that's what all these material safety data sheets are going to start out with who makes the product what's the epa registration number and how do you contact the company if there's something wrong all right well this one also has composition information on ingredients yeah so every product is going to tell you what's in it for just about all products they're going to tell you what the active ingredient is and then what some of the carriers are like in this case uh, the the product that Darren's looking at here is a dry product so the carrier is clay so clay is actually one of the ingredients well, there wasn't any health problem with the clay in here, but, but some of the other no. stuff maybe there is. Now, okay, hazard identification. Yeah, so just telling you how toxic this product really is. So that's where we well, start getting into... Well, based on your skin or in your eyes or if you right. eat it or anything like that. So yeah, depending on how some of it may come onto you or blow into your face or... or Whatever, you spill some on your arm, something like that. All right, how about first aid measures? Yep, first aid measures, pretty self-explanatory. Also, there's firefighting measures. Just keep going, Darren. Now we, right. we start moving going through to the some speed of these round. things pretty quick. Accidental yep. release measures. Yeah, so with a lot of these products, if it happens to be a two and a half gallon jug and it falls in the ground and breaks, it's probably not the end of the world, but you have to check on the material safety data sheet and see, well, what is a reportable quantity? What do I do with this now that it did happen to spill? And, you know, these things rarely come into play because almost in all cases these things are used properly there's no big issue but if there ever would happen to be a problem that's why some of these things are on here okay handling and storage procedures yep. Exposure controls or personal protection. Yep, so this is gonna talk a little bit about what you need to wear. Do you need to wear a respirator? Do you just need to wear rubber gloves? How safe are a lot of these products? Okay, physical and chemical properties, so the boiling point and that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, oh, and one of the things too that goes along with that is the vapor pressure. And this is something we talk to farmers about a lot because let's say you wanted to spray a residual product, something that's gonna last for let's say two or three weeks. Oh, we do it in you, the garden all the time with preen. Right, and you're gonna spray that on top of the ground or lay that on top of the ground, what's the vapor pressure? How quickly is that going to uh, vaporize up and go up in the air? So with a very high vapor pressure product, you might spray it out on the ground and think, oh, I'm going to get great weed control for a while. Uh, no, you're not. It's a sunny, windy day. You just lost it all in the air. Okay, well, then we've also got stability and reactivity if it will react with something else. Then toxicology information and LD50. Yep, so we talk a lot about LD50s here on Ag PhD. It's very important for you to know with some of these products and what LD50 stands for is lethal dose 50%. How much does it take to kill 
well half of test subjects. One of the reasons why we bring this up is a lot of these products on the farm are actually really safe. So I give the example all the time people talk about atrazine and how dangerous it is. I say, look, atrazine doesn't cause cancer, number one. And number two, the LD50 on atrazine is 3,000 milligrams per kilogram. Whereas with caffeine, the LD50 is 200 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So in other words, it literally takes 15 times more atrazine to kill you than it does caffeine. All right, how about birds and how about fish? Ecological information they have on here as well. So if you're spraying near a stream or if you've got birds in your area, you have to be careful for that. Then we look at disposal considerations. What are you gonna dispose it for? Why aren't you gonna use it for weed control? <laughs> yep, but nevertheless, the company has to develop all that information in case somebody needed to dispose it. We get all the DOT shipping information, then regulatory information by the state, by the country. That's different in some states. Yeah, and it is going to be different. It really depends on the product. Now, obviously, a lot of the products we're dealing with are relatively safe and so it's standard across the entire United States but there are some products that there's certain reporting measures there's certain usage things some products are just entirely not labeled in certain states and they might be labeled right across the border in the very next state so you want to make sure you're always checking to make sure the product you're using is labeled in your state and even in your county and the last thing they have here is just some other information like when this label was written and when the last update was and which company yeah, was so, by and so forth. Yep. Yeah, so we just wanted to make sure that you understood there there is this material safety data sheet. There's also what we talk about often on Ag PhD, the label, the chemical label and then material safety data sheet. They're two separate things. So the MSDS sheet is talking about all the safety measures and everything that we just went through. The label is talking about how do you use this to control weeds or insects or diseases, whatever it is. Well, there's a lot of things that go into the MSDS sheet, but it doesn't tell you how to kill our weed of the week. We'll show you how to control this tough weed coming up later in the show. In the world of four-wheel drive tractors, there is no name more powerful than Steiger. The newest addition to the powerful Case IH Steiger line is the Steiger Row Track, available at Titan Machinery. Designed for row crop use, the Row Track provides more maneuverability and reduces compaction while maintaining power and performance. It's available with 16, 18, or 24-inch tracks for row spacing as narrow as 20 inches. Visit your Titan Machinery dealer today to learn more about the Case IH Steiger Row Track. Titan Machinery, better solutions. You can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. Give your crops more than just NPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. MicroLink, linking yield to potential. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Looking to maximize yield? QuickRoots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. QuickRoots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. QuickRoots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Roundup Ready Soybean Patent Expiration. Darren, the day is coming that farmers have been waiting for for almost 20 years now. Well, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things that you wait so long and by the time you get it, well, it's not very good. Like, let's right. just say that when you're growing up, you said, you know, I really hope I can get a $20,000 a year job. 
And then by the time you get out of college, you say, whoa, 20,000, that's nothing. I got to have a $40,000 job or better. And you know, it's just the same thing with Roundup Ready 1 soybeans, the original Roundup trait that came out in beans. Now, hey, it's been a great trait for a lot of years, yep. but you know what? The genetics just haven't kept up now and the Roundup Ready to Yield and the Liberty Link trait and some of these other things that are coming with the Dicamba trait and the List beans. You know, all that's coming, Brian, and Roundup 1 just isn't exciting anymore to me. Well, it's not. And part of the reason why is they stopped breeding Roundup 1 beans many years ago. So basically, if you're going to plant Roundup 1 soybeans today, you're probably talking eight-year-old technology at least. And as fast as they're able to develop newer, better soybeans today, you talk eight years ago, you're probably dropping five bushels plus. When you look at this Roundup Ready 1 trait, it doesn't expire for a while yet. I've talked to a number of farmers over the winter that are all excited about, you know, I should plant some Roundup Ready 1s this year because I could save them. Hold on, you're way ahead of the game. That Roundup Ready 1 patent doesn't expire until late in the season. I believe it's August of 2014. Well, you're not going to wait till August to plant. You're going to plant some crap much earlier than that next year. So really, we're talking about 2015, where you could potentially save some Roundup Ready 1 beans if you felt that was the best business decision for your farm. Okay, so if you want to plant Roundup Ready 1 soybeans this spring, you certainly can do it, but you can't save them for the 2014 season. You're going to have to wait till next year. But I guess what I kind of come back to is, okay, the genetics are different. You're going to give up yield but not only that by the time you can actually save these beans for seed in 2015 we know that the dicamba trait will be out and enlist also should be out so you know you've got dicamba you've got enlist with 2,4-D boy I don't know I mean for me on my farm there's no way I'm planting non dicamba or non 2,4-D beans once they come out because now I can kill any weed I've got for a broadleaf weed right Darren well just about Brian but let's just say this <laughs> you know you look at how fast roundup weed resistance is spreading across our country and and by the time the Roundup Ready 1 patent goes off, there'll be resistant weeds all over. And your odds of having a field where you don't have a single Roundup resistant weed are going to be pretty slim. All right, so we really don't care if you want to save your Roundup 1 beans or you don't for the 2015 season, whatever. But let's talk economics just a little bit. And this is probably going to be the determining factor when it comes down to it. Because, you know, prior to about six, seven years ago, we were dealing with five or six dollar soybeans. All right, if I had, let's say five dollar soybeans and I can save forty dollars a bag by saving my own beans, well, you know what? I got to have an eight bushel gain. That's an awful lot of money. Now, with $15 beans or even $10 beans, you know, I don't know what the market's going to be this fall. Let's figure it even at 10. Okay, so all of a sudden, $40, now you're talking four bushels. Well, I'm going to beat four bushels hands down, okay? When we start talking eight bushels, that's where it gets pretty questionable. But at the four bushel difference, there's no way I'm saving Roundup One beans. What do you think? You know, the point is, when you're making these decisions, especially seed decisions, you can't be looking at it just as, well, what does the seed cost versus the other seed? And you know, I don't want to spend 40 or 50 bucks. I'm going to take it out of my bin and spend 15. Well, okay, that's a cost decision. That's not a decision based on what's going to make you the most money. And really with all your inputs uh, on our show, you'll hear us pound this thought over and over again that you can't look at these inputs as costs. You have to look at them as investments. And you say, if I'm going to plant this seed, I've got the potential to get five to 10 bushels more than if I plant this seed. Well, so what if it costs $20 less? That really doesn't matter. That's only a bushel or a bushel and a half or maybe two bushels difference. If you've got five to 10 bushels more potential with the better seed and the more expensive seed, well, that's the investment you wanna make. Yeah, so I guess when it comes down to it, yes, Roundup Ready 1 beans most likely are gonna be available to save in a couple years. But again, just keep in mind, well, the patent is going off on the Roundup trait it is not going off on the particular varieties that that trait is in. So unless Monsanto says, hey, we're not going to come after you like we expect they're going to, this is a moot point. It doesn't matter that the Roundup trait's off, the patents aren't. I just wanted to again say it's 2015 before you're at uh, the 2015 growing season before you can actually save anything. You probably won't be able to save all varieties because some companies are still going to protect their varieties. And even when this comes off patent, just keep in mind, there are a whole bunch of new traits and newer genetics that hopefully are going to yield a lot better. And that seed decision may be very important if you have our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? There are more mounds to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrec technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? 
I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. Today's number is three. You can see it everywhere, and it can stand for almost anything. But when it comes to protecting the nitrogen that feeds your crops, three is the special number that sets Nutrisphere N, Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager, apart because Nutrisphere N has proven to reduce all three forms of nitrogen loss, which adds up to keeping more nitrogen and yield where it belongs. So ask for Nutrisphere N, the stabilizer that fights nitrogen loss three ways. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature, and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green-striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green-striped pipe you can count on. Well, Brian, many farmers' dreams have just come true because now you can buy seed that has the refuge right in the bag, so you don't have to plant two separate things. Yes, and that's awesome because the regulatory problems that certain farmers are running into where they didn't quite plant enough refuge corn and people are getting after them, it's so simple when it's right in the bag. But the reason why we're talking about this today is we want you to think about what does that refuge really mean? Well, what it does mean is we have seeds there that are unprotected from maybe it's the below ground pests or the above ground pests, whatever it is, but do you want to leave 5%, 10%, 20% of your field completely unprotected? Well, here's the other thing too, Brian, is the different trait packages have different requirements for how much of that refuge has to be in the bag. So just yep. like you were saying, you may have a 5% refuge in the bag. Well, okay, there's one out of 20 plants out there that's not protected. Maybe a guy takes his chances. But if you say it's 20% refuge in a bag, all of a sudden now, wow, that's one out of five plants out there that I'm not going to have protected. I don't know if I like that so much. And here's yeah. where some guys said, you know, maybe the old refuge was kind of a pain in the butt, but at least I could treat that <laughs> one-fifth of my field separate. Now, unfortunately, there weren't a lot of guys doing that. A lot of guys just said, well, I'm going to take my chances, and those refuge acres often suffered. Okay, but let's talk through the economics just a little bit, even on our own farm here. Okay, if I'm going to plant a seed that does not have rootworm protection, I may be giving up 40 bushels per acre. If one out of every 20 plants has that loss, basically I can just take my 40 number divided by 20. So across the whole field, that's a two bushel loss. And you say, oh, two bushels per acre, no big deal. Well, I think that is a big deal. Let's just say, for example, corn was $6. I mean, last year I sold my corn for a lot more than $6, but let's just call it six bucks. Okay, well, there's $12 an acre. And what does it cost to put insecticide out on your farm? You could buy, let's say, Capture LFR, and you could get it for less than $12 an acre. So I could treat the whole field just by what I'm going to gain on that 5% of refuge, Darren. Well, that could be a big deal, Brian. And a lot of guys say, you know what? Even on my traded corn, I'm worried about rootworms that may be resistant, or I'm yep. worried about uh, above ground corn borers that could become resistant. I, I don't want to have to worry about treating for them. I really want to make sure the viability of my trait remains for the long term. So there have been a lot of studies done over the last few years, and a bunch of them right on our own farm brand, as far as is it worth putting insecticide on? Maybe just a half rate, or is the full rate going to be worth money on a traded hybrid? Yep. So in our case, if it's going to be smart stacks, for example, you know what? We're going to put insecticide at probably a half rate on the whole thing, and I think we're going to do just fine. But but if all I had was one rootworm trait and I had uh, a refuge in a bag system, 
I don't know. I don't think I'd be real comfortable with even a half rate. But here's the whole thing. Every area is you'd, a little you'd different. You'd want a full rate. Yeah, so don't get us wrong here. We love refuge in a bag. It's awesome. That's the way we want to go because it makes it simple and easy for every farmer out there. And we know every farmer's in compliance then with what the rules are. But it's just a little concerning because in some areas of the country, the rootworm pressure is super bad. The corn borer pressure might be super bad. We want you to at least be thinking about still treating that field. And certainly when you do treat, you're going to help prevent any resistance that might build up. You know, Brian, there are a lot of people that kind of say, I don't know, we should have any refuge for these bugs. I don't want any of them to live. <laughs> and certainly when it comes to weeds, we don't want to see weeds out in your field. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our Weed of the Week is Ivy Leaf Morning Glory, and Darren was cheating just a little bit. You pulled out our Ag PhD iPhone uh, All right, field guide, I'll, I'll admit it. I'll admit it. It's really <laughs> handy to look it up on the Field Guide app because, you know what, we don't have Ivy Leaf Morning Glory on our farm. No. And so I look it up because I don't want to forget anything. I was thinking, you know, I know this product's good. I know this product, but I wonder about this one. I don't remember, so I look it up on the Field Guide app. It's pretty simple. It's just right there. Yeah, now the, the thing that I do remember, I what I do is I'll take a lot of these weeds that we don't have on our farm, and I say, well, what's that similar to? So Ivy Leaf Morning Glory is kind of viney, just like wild buckwheat would be. So I think a lot about wild buckwheat. What works well on wild buckwheat? Chances are that's going to work fairly well on Ivy Leaf Morning Glory. Well, Not exactly, but close. With Ivy Leaf Morning Glory, I'll say this. You absolutely have to use at least a two-pass program or you're going to have a disaster. If you yep. try to get it all pre-emerge, you're just not going to get it 100% if you've got heavy infestations in your field. And if you try to do it all post-emerge, it's so hard on a viney weed like this. If you don't have something holding it back a little bit, it can take over your field pretty quick. All right, Darren. So what's our field guide app say you should do in <laughs> corn, for well, example? The field guide app, uh, we go into some pretty good detail on there with a lot of different products. And you know what? It varies depending on where you're at in the country. Like in corn, for example, I really like Sure Start and Triple Flex in our area. They work really nice. They aren't 100% an Ivy Leaf Morning Glory, but they're pretty good. And then post-emerge, the best choice by far is using status. Now, many guys say, okay, well, I'm going to put in just a low rate with my Roundup. No, that's not going to do it for you. You need to go a full rate of status, and you can still put some Roundup or Liberty out there too if you need to, but you have to use a full rate of status if you have Ivy Leaf Morning Glory. Yeah, so oh, one last thing, Brian, is atrazine. You could use atrazine either pre or post. We greatly prefer it post-emerge. You can use about a half a pound with the status. It works great. All right, soybeans, we want you to start with one of the Authority products down. If it was me, I'd probably start with Authority MTZ. That way I save my first rate for some post-emerge weeds that that's good on. I save my Pursuit post-emerge where it could have some activity on Ivy Leaf Morning Glory. And you could also throw in some Cadet for a little kicker on those post-emerge treatments. That works well. But what's best post-emerge in soybeans? Well, post-emerge Classic and Synchrony are probably yeah. the best, but it depends on your soil pH, so you have to watch the label on those products. Okay, and finally, wheat, what we would suggest is do Sharpen as a burn down, follow up with Wide Match and Addition Broad Spec post-emerge, and that should take care of any Ivy Leaf Morning Glory you've got in wheat. That's all the time we have for this week's Weed of the Week, Ivy Leaf Morning Glory, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. AFS is less complex and built right into our equipment. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? Spring tillage often involves a field cultivator. We'll discuss setting it up properly in today's Iron Talk. Field cultivators are great for leveling off the field and creating a nice seed bed. They also work very well stirring and mixing pre-emerge herbicides while wiping out small weeds that may already have begun to grow. My dad always told us that field cultivators should be run fast so as not to dig too deep and to bury herbicides below the weed germination zone. One other thing about not running too deep is something you may not have considered. The deeper you go, the more pressure there is on the sweeps, leading to a great chance that those sweeps will start to cheat back on you, which would result in an uneven floor at the depth of your tillage. 
to check what you're really accomplishing with any tillage pass, including the field cultivator we're talking about here. Just brush the freshly tilled soil aside until you get to beneath where that tillage tool reached. Now, if you're running the field cultivator too deep, the floor underneath the tillage will be uneven with deeper valleys directly beneath the sweeps. Sweeps should sit level and flat to do the most effective job. If you're running a field cultivator this spring, get out of the tractor every so often and brush the freshly tilled soil off to the side so you can check the floor of that tillage. Again, if it's uneven, make the necessary adjustments to create an even environment for your crop in order to maximize yield potential and the weed control from your pre-emerge herbicide. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest from one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, Save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green-striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green-striped pipe you can count on. For lower cost, higher production, see your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Ask about the best production-built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport to easy use. 12 to 85 foot widths, heavy-duty 4x8 3 inch tube frame, and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco Land Rollers, improved soil to seed contact, faster, more uniform germination, less moisture loss, eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Visit NorthCountryMarketing.biz or call. Micronutrients are not optional for plants, they are essential. TJ Micromix is a profit-proven management tool that ensures the availability of essential secondary and micronutrients. Formulated as a dry granule or liquid, TJ Micromix is plant available, easy to mix and apply. The Synergistic Fertilizer Mix delivers consistent yield response on a variety of crops by complementing an NPK fertilizer program. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get your TJ Micromix today. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new S Cube Commercial Tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Why are many farmers reducing tillage? Reduced tillage has shown to increase soil's organic matter levels, reduce erosion potential, improve soil structure, and increase microbial activity and soil life. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.